Hey, welcome back to Casual Tech Review. For this video, we're going to be re-examining some more details about overclocking and fine-tuning the performance of my ASRock RX 7900 GRE, so stay tuned. In my last video, which I'll link somewhere up here in the corner, we took a preliminary look at what it was like and the experience of overclocking and undervolting and, and, and fiddling uh, in the adrenaline software with the new RX 7900 GRE. I went down into the details of specific settings I was trying and what the results were and, and what the performance I was getting, etc. For this video, I've decided we're going to skip past a lot of the questions about what works, what doesn't, oh it crashed, oh it didn't, and let's go right into performance some of the different settings that I tested that were stable, performed well, compare them all together, and you can decide if any of these will work for you. All right, so let's look at four different groups of settings that I'm going to run through a series of benchmarks, and we'll compare the performance. The first is what I'll call the default setting. This is what you're going to get straight out of the box with the 7900 GRE. The GPU is going to be set somewhere between 2550 and 2600 megahertz. The default voltage is uh, 1.05 volts or 1,050 millivolts. The memory, which is, again, the issue with the 7900 GRE, is going to be set at 2250 megahertz, which is what it is out of the box, with the default memory timing and the default power limit. The next group of settings we're going to look at is what I call a memory overclock. The only thing that we are going to mess with is the memory speed. So the GPU will stay default, the voltage will stay the same, the memory is going to get an overclock of 2400 megahertz, which is around 19 gigabits per second. Uh, the memory timing will stay at default, and I did up the power limit to 115%. The next one we're going to look at is what I call preferred settings. This is going to be the GPU set at 2650 megahertz, a slight undervolt down to 1 volt or 1000 millivolts. The memory will be uh, overclocked to 2380 megahertz. The memory timing will still be the default with the power limit increase to 115%. And the last one is what I'll call the pushy setting. This is 2700 megahertz on the GPU. The voltage is not undervolted at all. It's back at 1050 millivolts. The memory, 2420 megahertz. This is the bleeding edge of what I could get to run fairly stable for the memory. The memory timing will stay at default, and the power limit will again be raised to 115%. So in order to test each of these different overclock settings, I ran the card through a series of four benchmarks, 3 Marks Time Spy and Fire Strike, Unigen Heaven and Unigen Superposition at all four of these different settings and compared all the results. And let's take a look, and we're going to use our favorite medium, Charts. So the very first test we're going to look at is 3D Mark Fire Strike, which is a free benchmark you can run, and it's a great test for Direct Direct X 11 applications. So let's look at the raw data. So here's the results that I got after running the GPU through all four settings on 3D Mark Fire Strike. Uh, you can see represented here on this chart the default settings, obviously at 100% performance, got a total score of 32,109. Surprisingly, the memory overclock version got 111% of the default performance at 35,737, with the preferred coming in next, which is, of course, a slightly less uh, aggressive memory overclock along with a mild GPU overclock and an undervolt, which is where I really prefer to keep things. That's why it's my preferred at 110%. And the pushy graphical settings where everything was overclocked and pushed and boosted to the max was 109%. So I did find this uh, result to be very, very interesting with Firestrike. All right, next up in my suite of tests is another 3D Mark benchmark called Time Spy. And this is a really popular one. Again, it's free uh, on the 3D Mark demo. And this is more for DirectX 12 applications. So let's take a look at the data real quick. You can see here there's the default score. 19,638, the graphics score of 21,566. The memory overclock showed a 4% increase on that score, 20,426. The preferred settings, 5% uh, improvement at 20,747. 
and pushing it all the way with the extreme overclock settings on pushy was again 104. So it just goes to show you that uh, there is oftentimes a sweet spot for the various settings you can have, and it's not always pushing everything to the maximum. You can see, although it's not as good of a result as we got on Firestrike, which was closer to 10%, these are more 5%, but still it is a pretty nice graphical increase with just using some of the overclock settings available in the GPU. For the next benchmark test we're going to look at, let's take a look at Unigen Heaven, which is, again, it's an older benchmark, but it's still a pretty good one that I like to use uh, to just check on the stability of a card. This is the one I used in the last video, just as my basic stability test. So you can see here the default score of 5,713 on all default settings. Again, you're going to see similar uh, results as to the time spy. Uh, memory overclock gave us a 4% increase up to 59.29. Again, the preferred settings, there's a reason why they're preferred. A 6% increase all the way up to 6,086. And pushy brings us back down to 4% at 5,981. Next up for this test, we have Unigen Superposition, which is another great benchmark test. And for this one, I had to run. Uh, this test on the 1080p extreme setting, uh, superposition does not have a 1440p option. So 1080p extreme was the best I could do. Let's take a look at the overall scores. The default was 12,251. The memory overclock gave a 3% increase in performance. The best performance came from the preferred settings at 6%, all the way up to 13,041. And then the pushy settings brought us back to 3% at 12,709. So the preferred setting was the best of the bunch. Superposition also gives you some good data on FPS numbers during the test. And I've got those here on this chart. You can see the default average of 91 with a high of 114 and a low of 70. The memory overclock, which I'm still pretty impressed at the difference that just the memory overclock makes. Uh, we've got an average of 95, a uh, max of 117, and a low of 73 for a 4% performance increase. The preferred, again, ends up being the best settings to use, has a 98 FPS average, 122 on the max, 75 on the min. And finally, pushy is really, really similar to the memory overclock, and that's going to line up at 95%, or excuse me, 95 FPS average. 119 max and 73 minimum so your preferred settings on the gpu gives you an eight percent performance boost over the default which is the uh, the best graphical setting options for this particular benchmark one of the main reasons why at least i like to tweak the settings on graphics cards particularly undervolting is to control the temperatures and I was watching the temperature of the graphics card throughout this slate of tests. And I was planning on including it in each different test. But what I was finding is that it really wasn't that much of a variance between all of them. I've really been impressed with how this card stays nice and cool. And you can see here that uh, this is the final result of the temperature, the high temperatures and the low temperatures of this card throughout all the tests that I ran. I ran all of these tests pretty much right in a row over the course of an afternoon. And that being the case of it just running benchmark after benchmark after benchmark, the high on the GPU was only 54 degrees with a hot spot of 88. So clearly, even though it was working hard all afternoon running all these benchmarks, the temperature still didn't get up that high. So I didn't feel like the need to break down the temps for each individual test. This card performed incredibly well, staying cool. So what's the other reason to tune your graphics card? Well, you're looking at it right here. It's to improve performance. And I've averaged out how each different graphics setting performed over all of the tests. And you can see the winner, of course, is the preferred settings. That's why they're preferred at 107% of the default settings. The memory overclock and the pushy were both the same, which again kind of surprised me that the memory overclock uh, was as effective as it was. But I guess that just goes to show how important that memory is and just how powerful this graphics card could be if I felt comfortable pushing 
the memory overclock on this card even a little bit higher. I'm sure the preferred number would be even better. Nevertheless, I'm still pretty happy with what this card can do. I'm getting a 7% performance boost without paying any penalty in cooling. The card stays nice and cool, and I'm really, really happy with the results. So there you have it. There is my preferred graphic settings in Adrenaline for the RX 7900 GRE ASRock Steel Legend that fits what I'm trying to do. And that's what you have to remember when I'm doing these tests. And I got a ton of great feedback from folks on my first video. Thank you all very much for engaging. I learned a lot from going back and forth with um, most of you guys and, and, and what you've experienced as well. But ultimately, it's going to be up for you. What works best for what you're trying to do in your particular use case and how you want to use the graphics card. This is what works the best for me. I'll go ahead and I'll throw the different graphic settings up here again, just so you can take a look at them if you're interested. I really appreciate you watching. Of course, please leave your feedback down below. Let me know how your uh, 7900 GREs are performing, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.